Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming in. In this episode, we've got uh, some financial things we got to take care of. And uh, we got equipment that needs to be repaired. We got bank loans that we need to try and pay off uh, or borrow more money from, depending upon how that goes. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. So let's see where to begin. Uh, let's start with some weirdness again with contracts. So. Uh, several episodes ago, if you guys have been watching the series all along, you'll, you'll recall maybe that I, uh, I did a grain contract and I had a problem with dumping the grain off at my own, uh, production, my own grain mill. And I got really confused about how that all went down. And so basically what happened is I... I sold the grain that I was supposed to turn in and got like $19,000 or something like that. But, and then when I realized what had happened, um, I had, um, I gave that money back essentially. But one of you guys told me in the comments, uh, JRWE in particular, said that I actually was charged, and I didn't notice it. I was charged um, basically for that. Uh, he said I was charged around $28,000. Um, oh, by the way, yeah, I, I got the comment up. This was episode 107, and he says around uh, 31 minutes and 44 seconds into the video is when this happened. So if anybody is you know wants to actually go back and watch all of that, you can. It's episode 107, around 31.44. Um, and I didn't know that. I, I, I completely missed that I got charged for that money. I, I, the, I was just so confused about it. <laughs> <laughs> how all that happened that I was like, my brain was scrambled. So anyways, uh, according to uh, JRWE, uh, I actually the game actually owes me $27,803 for that whole deal. Uh, and he did a little bit of math for me and figured it out. And I really appreciate him pointing that out because we could really use that money. Okay, so once again, uh, if you uh, want to know the, the full background, go to episode 107 around uh, 3144. And you'll see that I got charged around $28,000, he says, for uh, be because the game thought that I had essentially stolen the grain. But the thing is, is I had also given that money back that I got for the actual grain, too, except for there was it, it was uh, it still scrambles my brain to try and figure it all out. Um, so so that means the game currently owes me twenty seven thousand eight hundred three dollars. OK, so we're going to take that money first. Uh, so we're going to do 27803 uh, and add that to our account. Okay, so that's squared away. Now, um, I had some more weirdness with the cotton contracts and delivering the cotton to my spinnery. So if you guys watched the last episode, you'll know that I had several cotton contracts and most of those contracts were going to my spinnery. So the first few that I dropped off seemed to work okay. Uh, but for some reason, the very last contract didn't, uh, it wouldn't let me finish it. And so what I did was um, to try and in an attempt to finish it is what I did was I spawned in a cotton bale, but I screwed up and I spawned in uh, the larger square bale instead of the smaller um, round bale. And that still didn't complete the contract, so I just ended up canceling that contract, even though I had actually done the work on it. Um, and part of the, you know, I, I do not like that round cotton harvester at all. I, I much, much prefer the square one. So any future contracts that we do for cotton, we're going to use the square baler, uh, just as a side note. And the reason for that is because you can extract, as long as I think it has at least 10% inside of it uh, with the square baler, you can extract the cotton out of it. But with the round one, if there's any cotton uh, in the front chamber, um, I don't know of any way to get, get that out. And incidentally, if you guys do know that and you left me a comment in the last episode, I haven't seen it yet because I'm recording these back to back before I go on my trip. Okay, so anyway, um, what I ended up doing then is giving myself a whole crap ton of cotton. And I need to pay for that, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, if we go into my production, um, I have currently have 21,442 liters of cotton sitting in my production. I haven't started it yet because I wanted to show you guys all this on camera first so you know what was going on. Um, 
I got a little bit of, of cotton from the other, you know, the bonus cotton from the other contracts. I don't remember exactly how much it is. So we're going to keep things simple and we're going to just say that the 1442 is the bonus that we got from the other contracts and it's the 20,000 liters that I, that I need to pay for. Okay. So what the way we're going to do that is we're going to take a look at uh, the prices and my spinnery is offering 1241 um, per thousand liters of cotton. And we're just going to use this price here because it, it, it's the quest broke. It didn't work right. And it's, it's caused me all kinds of emotional trauma. <laughs> So we're taking the lower price. I'm just kidding. It didn't, but it is a little bit frustrating. Uh, so basically we need to take tw uh, 1241 and multiply that by 20,000. And that comes out to $25,360. So we're just going to treat this as if I purchased that cotton for my spinnery. Uh, and we're going to pay for that right now. Okay. So uh, we're going to remove 25000 $360. Okay, that's been done. That cotton is now ours. We paid for it. Fair and square. And we can now activate this and it'll start making fabric out of the cotton in addition to the wool. Okay, so um, I'm the kind of person, you guys, that it's very important to make sure, you know, that with finances in particular, uh, you know, that we're, that we're doing everything right. You know, that everything's squared away and that we're on the level and all that. So... That's just kind of, kind of who and how I am. I manage the finances uh, in in my household, and um, you know I, I like to keep keep things tight and frugal and all that kind of thing. Um, anyway, okay, so so that takes care of that. Now let's see what's next. Okay, so we so that leaves us with one hundred seventy five thousand five hundred twenty two dollars. It is still October first, and the reason it's still October first is because. As opposed to October third, when I said it was going to be back, is because we have some in, some very important financial decisions to make, and we also have to just do some things that need to happen. I need to get my equipment repaired because I haven't been repairing them over the last couple of months because our money's been just so tight. Uh, it's a temporary situation as always. We're actually in very good shape financially. Um, you know, overall, but it's just been tight for the last few months. And that's because we borrowed a bunch of money essentially to purchase field 57, uh, which by the way, we need to put a second, second application of slurry on in this episode. Cause it means that it needs it. So we'll do that later. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to repair our equipment and get it back up into good shape. So that's only $633 for that. The fence, $8,000. Oh Lordy. <laughs> it's not even halfway down. That is so expensive, but we got to do it. We got to do it. Okay, so that takes care of that. Um, whoops. Let's get this out of the way now. Then we'll have to... Yeah, we got a, a parade of repairs that have to happen here. I have a... I, I think I have a few other items that need repairing too, like our combine probably needs some attention and our bale pickup and all that. But the tractors are the most important to keep in tip-top condition, of course. If you didn't know this, if you run a tractor uh, in disrepair, you lose horsepower from it. If you run a combine in disrepair, it doesn't, you lose um, yield. So it's really, really important to keep those things in, in good repair. Okay, we're almost certainly going to be using the Fent later, so let's not put it away. We'll just park it right here for now. Okay. Next is the McCormick. Let's get it repaired with our handy dandy little two blocks. That's going to cost $4,504 to repair that. Okay. And then the New Holland. This one's going to be expensive. $6,630. And the Rosselmosh Cultivator, $683. Okay, let's go look at... Yeah, let's do our... Our bale trailer, our bale pickup trailer here. Uh, that's 282. Uh, we don't need to repair the, the trailer. It's in good enough shape for now. And then let's look at the combine and the header here. Uh, that's in good condition. Okay, the, the combine is 1150 and the header is 531. Yeah, definitely important to keep the header and the combine in tip top condition. 
Oh, you know what? We don't need uh, we don't need the fast baler anymore. But I do want to make sure that our baler uh, balers are in good condition. So thirteen sixty eight for that, and well, that one's actually pretty much in good condition. I'm not too worried about the rollers or the cedars. Uh, let's look at the rake and the man truck. Okay, the rake is two ninety eight. We use that all the time. The man eight twenty two. Uh, yeah, okay. I think the rollers are fine. Okay, I think that repairs all of our real essential equipment. So that brings us down to $150,202. But, again, it had to get done. Very important. Okay, so let's get... Uh, let's get the McCormick back out to the animal yard because we need to do, do a mix, and we're going to use our bunker silage for the first time uh, doing that. Okay, uh, we need to wash the New Holland and the Rosselmosh. Let's get that done next. All right, now let's uh, let's return the fast baler. I think I'm pretty sure I don't want it anymore. It worked fine, you know, the way that it worked, but uh, we've come up with a better a better way since then. So select that and return. Now, if we did want to purchase it, we could get it for eighty eight nine seventy seven because uh, you know with the lease to buy thingy, but we we don't. Uh, so we, th this is normally a little over a hundred grand brand new. Uh, so let's just return that and then that'll take that expense away. Actually, what's, what's the deal with this? This is purchase that for 15,000. No, let, let's just keep, I, I mean, I used three rollers for our hay. So let's keep that uh, on the least, uh, least to own for now. Uh, $15,000 is a substantial chunk of money at this point. Well, it always is, but especially at this point. Okay, so that takes care of that. Um, now, let's see. What's next on the list? I, it, this is one of those episodes where there's just a whole bunch of things that have to get done. I really should write these things down, <laughs> but I, I'm too lazy to do that sometimes. So, Okay, let's just park the New Holland in here. Um, okay, so I think now let's let's do our, our mixture next. Um so we're gonna we're gonna need our our telehandler and our bucket. And I believe I parked the telehandler actually underneath the barn over here. Okay, so um let's see, we're gonna want two bales of hay. And we use the, the 2.4 meter square bales. We're going to want one bale of straw. And then the rest is going to be silage. But see, this is this is changing a little bit. Our mixture ratio because we the bales that we were using were 6,500 liter bales. Were they? Yeah. And I think our bucket is 5,000. And my usual mixture before um, brought the silage down pretty almost to you know the limit that it could go before it was not enough. So we're going to have to figure this out. Okay, let's drop those there. Drop that there. Okay, let's go get the bucket. It's just over here in the shed. All right, so I 
I don't know if, do I have to peel this back or does the bucket just do it automatically? Let's see. I don't remember. Nope, looks like we have to peel it back. Okay. So is that R? Yes, it is. Okay, so it uncovers like a, a little section of it. Interesting. Okay. Okay, so that's 5,000 liters. If we get another 1,500 liters in here, then it's, we're basically going to be exactly the same as we've been already. So we'll try we'll try to get that as close as possible. That takes a little while to empty out. Okay. Cool. This, bu this bucket is so big. <laughs> so big for this telehandler. It's hilarious. Okay, so we want, oh, we have 1,600 liters in already. Okay, so we went a little bit over. That's okay. Silage is the most valuable of the components for TMR, so, you, so you know, ideally you want to use the least amount of it and still have a full TMR mixture. So the 6,500 liter bales were actually working out pretty good for us. Um, you know, before, so this will be pretty close to the same here. Okay, so I'm just gonna for the for the nonce drop off the bucket here. I'll put it away later. Okay, so we're going to want one full bale in there. And let's turn it on. Okay, so we'll just fill this up. Maybe just a touch up beyond its limit, because again, when we put more hay in, it'll go back down. So probably right about there. I don't want to overdo it. There it goes. Oh wow, that was close. <laughs> we almost, we almost had too much straw. That was almost perfect, though, man. Look at that. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, we, we definitely need to be careful about not going... We only want to go just a Nat's eyebrow <laughs> above the edge of the straw. Well, I mean, we, we put a little more silage in this time, though, than normal, too. So it's not going to always be exactly the same, um, you know, using the bucket. Uh, all right. So let's see... I will put all of this stuff away later. So let's run this over to the cow barn. We can turn the choppers off. I haven't had any more weirdness with the sausages, fortunately. I think what I'm going to do for the November hay cutting is I'm just going to put the sausages along the road. Maybe this road or maybe probably the one actually over there because it's flatter and wider. And then, you know, depending upon how our finances are after we do our big sales in January, I'd really like to get some fermenting silos. But I don't know for sure if we're going to be able to pull that off. We'll have to wait and see.
Okay. And yeah, I've just been leaving the McCormick parked in here, connected to the wagon, so I can just jump in here and top them off. It seems to work pretty good. I'll pull the McCormick out, you know, if I need it for other tasks, but otherwise that's kind of where it's been living lately. That works out good. Okay, so let's see. We got that taken care of. Now, I have to think, is there anything else we need to do before we do the big thing that I'm kind of sort of planning on doing? <laughs> Uh, let, I'll tell you what, let me put this stuff away while I think about it, and I'll bring you guys back in a moment. Okay, yes, I do remember we have another um, major task that we need to do uh, in this episode. Uh, or I want to do it in this episode, anyways. And that is uh, we need to spread slurry on field 57, our, which will be our second fertilizer application. Uh, so we still have uh, slurry in our tank, but we'll go ahead and fill it all the way up. And I will probably just end up leasing once again that same spreader we had before. They're really, really expensive. And it's something that I intend to eventually own, but I, you know, I want to wait until one comes on sale first. Uh, you know, one that's at least as large as the one we leased last time, if not larger. Okay, so we are 70% full. So let's get this completely filled up, and then we'll go lease the this uh, applicator. I guess, yeah, I guess you'd call it an applicator. It's not really a sprayer. Now, I hope that I can... Um, our, our barley's in its first growth stage... I think I can drive over that with these tires without screwing it up. I mean, in the that might not be the case in the real world. I don't know. These are really beefy tires. You know what? Why don't we, before we commit to this, let me just double check that on a, on a small area of the field because if we can't do this, then we're going to have to use granular fertilizer and skinny tires, which I do have for the McCormick. I haven't had to use them in a long time. Uh, so yeah, let's just test this on a small spot of the field and see, okay, is it damaging? It doesn't look like it. No, okay, they seem to be okay. So maybe crop damage only occurs, you know, maybe once the crop is ripe or at some other later stage, but obviously that stage we can drive over it still. It seems to me like, I, you know, again, in real life, though, with as, as big as these tires are and as heavy as this tank is, that, that probably is <laughs> not very good for it, but maybe it can withstand it when it's uh, in the early stages of growth. So, yeah, we'll get that same applicator that we did before. It's, it's reasonable. It's like 20, 20 meters or something. So it's not too terribly painful. Uh, okay, we don't happen to have an applicator in here, do we? No, we don't. Okay, so we want to go to slurry uh, tanks, and I think uh, this is the one we got last time. Yeah, the Biomech uh, 21 meter. Okay, so let's lease that for 35.44. I don't really want to lease to own this one because this isn't really the one that I ultimately want, but. At the same time, I don't feel like I have enough cash on hand right now to lease, you know, one of the real big ones, which is probably going to be either the 4XL or the SBH8 there. So, again, I'm just waiting for one of those two real big guys to come on sale. Okay, so let's back up to here and connect this guy. It's a very tight squeeze. All right. So 30,000 liters. If I remember right, the last time we did this, it took two and a third tanks, but 
We're going to have a little bit more coverage this time because we're doing the entire field now, not just the, the original field. Okay, let's get her unfolded and we'll, we'll start right at this end. Let's take a look at the map. Okay, so yeah, I mean, there's some of these grass areas here have a double application, but for the most part, we're, we're really just gonna need to do the whole field because there's little spots within here too. And we're gonna have to rely upon, well, actually, you know what we could do? We could have course play do this for us because course play will know exactly where to go. I didn't even think about that. Excuse me. Um, yeah, why don't we do that? So if that's the case, I think we should maybe have course play start at this corner up here because this is a nice square corner. And it, it'll do a way better job than I'll, I'm going to be able to do with doing a nice, even efficient application because, you know, it's going to be hard for me to tell you know, now that there's, you know, foliage on the field exactly where we were or, or have been, you know, so. All right. So we will use course play to our advantage for sure. Uh, I don't have, oh. Let's just pretend that never <laughs> happened. <laughs> Man. Okay, moving along. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Didn't even think to look for the doggone train. All right. Yeah, okay. That never happened, you guys. It absolutely never happened. <laughs> for Pete's sake. Okay, so let's do this. Um, we want to... Oh, you know what? I want to get rid of auto drive because it keeps popping up. I'm not using it right now, so... Toggle HUD Alt Keypad Zero. There, yeah, let's just get rid of that. We'll turn it on when we're ready to use it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so what we want to do is right click on the screen and go to here. Okay, so we're on failed 57. Let's open up the course thingamadoodle. And actually, hold on a sec. No, yeah, we're at 21 meters, right? Yeah, we are. Okay. So open course thingy. All right, we're going to want... Yeah, one headland should be enough. Um... I think I want... I want to try sharp corners so we get full coverage. Hopefully that doesn't cause a problem. Uh, up and down's good. Circle. There's no islands. Okay, so generate this course. Now what we want to do is we want to check, uh, select field 57 folder. Do, wait, do we not have a folder for 57? I guess we don't. Okay, let's create one. Now we do. Okay, so field 57, uh, which is right here, save course. And we're going to call this um, F57 21 meter slurry. There we go. Okay. Uh, start at the first waypoint. Go to it. We'll let the AI do a nice, even job for us. Oh, you're going to go that way instead, huh? Okay, that's fine. Hmm. I wonder why it's overhanging just a little bit there. It's applying though, yeah. Yeah, it is very, very difficult to see, you know, where it's been applied versus where it hasn't. I just wish it was a little further over though, because it's, you know, it has a few more meters that it could get on the edge, but maybe it's just wanting to make sure it completely covers the edge. 
Get out of here, car. We do have the right working with, right? If I click this... Oh, we don't. That explains it. Okay, so for some reason it had detected the wrong width. So if you click on this, it resets it to the to the actual width it's supposed to be. Interesting. Okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, I'm going to let the AI finish this job. I'll bring you back when it's uh, done, and then we'll do the next thing. So see you in a bit. All right, guys, we're back and uh, just about finished with the slurry spreading. So it's just right about at the end here. And then we'll take a look at the map. I think there's a couple of spots we're going to have to touch up. Uh, but we're on our third tank and it's about halfway done. So, yeah, it's about two and a half tanks to do this field. Ish. Very good. Okay. Let's uh, remove the course. And take a look and see where we're at. That's pretty good, really. I mean, we got uh, we got a, a fairly long strip here. I'm not sure what's going on over here because I'm pretty sure he was all the way over the edge. And then there's just a little bit over here, too. So uh, let's see. We're going to go first. Let's see. What's the biggest area? Yeah, let's go back up here to this strip and get it done. All right, now uh, let's get all the way down to the edge here. Is that covering that? It isn't. Hmm. So it's, act, it's acting like this is the first application of fertilizer in this area. But I don't think I would have missed it the last time around. Okay. Let's see if we can get this other strip. Okay, well, that uses up the slurry, so... We can go ahead and return this. And that empties out our slurry tank. And our field is, I mean, yeah, it's it's probably 99% done, so it'll have to be good enough. A couple of those spots we couldn't do, so is what it is. All right, guys, so here's the thing. We are sitting at $146,000. We owe the bank 250 grand right here. And so one option is to pay part of that back off, probably 100,000 of it, to reduce the interest that we're paying. Um, but we only have uh, two more months before January where we're going to get our big payout. In the sales, we have this Massey Ferguson Ideal Combine. With it's only eleven months uh, old, so it's it's practically brand new. We also have the Claus Legion eighty nine hundred, which I believe is the biggest combine in the base game. Let's just confirm that. Yeah, that's the biggest combine in the base game. It's four hundred eighty nine fifty. Uh, you know, base price, but if it's decked out along with GPS, it's actually 513,000. So it's over half a million dollars if we were to buy a brand new. Okay. So this combine, because it's so much newer. Um, oh, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. This one. Yeah. Because it's so much newer, I'd be more inclined to buy this one, but here's the problem that we run into. If we bought this one, um, we'd add GPS to it and we would want to make sure that it's the maximum capacity, which is, which is the 17,000 liter. And if that brings a sucker up to $357,000, so we'd have to borrow over $200,000 more to buy this, but it would be, it would be very new and probably be the last combine we'd ever purchase in this playthrough. 
or we go with the Lexion. The Lexion um, has a longer pipe. It has more capacity. It's 18,000 liters. And with the GPS add-on, it's only 253,000. So we'd only have to borrow a little over a hundred grand more to buy this. The downside to this is that it is 35 months old. So it's not super old, but it's, you know, it's just starting to get up there. Um, so I've been, um, you know, thinking about these two. And if we do this, I, I think this is probably the better move for us. Even though the combine's quite a bit older, um, you know, we're not going to be using it all of the time like we do, you know, with the tractors. And as long as we keep it in good repair, I don't think the age of it's going to be that big of a deal. And it's going to give us a little bit higher capacity than the than the ideal anyways. Um, and yeah, it's got a longer pipe, higher capacity, and it's it's a pretty nice machine. So the question at hand then is, do I really want to borrow um, what's ultimately going to be, yeah, because we want to get a GPS on it. Um, we might as well get the wide tires because why not? Go big, go home. So $255,000 and change. So we'd have to borrow, um, you know, another, we'd, we'd probably just borrow another hundred and ten dollars to $15,000 in order to purchase this because we still need a little bit of operating cash. Um, and then that will bring our bank loan almost to the max, which I don't think you can borrow more than 500 grand from the bank. But when January comes around, we should, I, I expect to make, you know, around a million dollars. And, you know, we could pay that off and still have another 500 grand left over after that. And then we'll have ourselves a super nice combine. Now, we still also, you know, we won't have the header for it, so we'll probably, well, actually, let's look at that. If we go here and go to headers, I think that, actually, let's go back to here for a second. Let's go combinations. So the Flex 1380 header, which is a 13.8 meter header, Look at that, man. That thing is just enormous. Is would be the ideal one, of course, to put on it. But we don't necessarily have to get this immediately. We still have the 28-foot um, case header, even though it's a lot older. So, and here's the other thing. We're not actually going to even need to use a combine until... Uh, let's, well, here, let's see. If we look at the crop calendar... Our barley is harvested in June. So, I mean, we're not even going to use this thing until, uh, you know, until next June. So we're looking at, what, seven, eight months out? <clears throat> so the header could, you know, that header or another nice header could come up for sale between now and then anyway. But I don't, you know, I don't remember off the top of my head seeing the best combine in the game, in the base game coming up for sale before it could have but it's just was never something that was on my radar because it was just way out of our price range and it may not come up again for the rest of this playthrough so should we do it or shouldn't we do it <laughs> uh, the other option is you know to pay off a portion of the loan keep a little bit of operating cash wait till the end of the year um, and then have a lot more money at the end of the year but miss out on that opportunity to get that really nice combine so I'm, I'm not really sure what the right move is, to be honest with you. Um, part of me wants to do it. Part of me thinks, nah, we probably shouldn't. And yeah, and more combines will come up for sale. And even that one could come up for sale again later on down the road, maybe when we have more money to, to do it. So that is, that's also a consideration. That kind of looks like a dope plant. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's bamboo though. I don't know. Anyway, um... So yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at with this and what I've been thinking about. And unfortunately, I can't ask your guys' opinion because, you know, I'm I'm recording these ahead of time. So, to do or not to do, that is the question. I think, drum roll, please, da -da 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 that we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it because I know that I can afford to do it. If it was a situation where it was uncertain whether I was going to be able to pay the bank back after buying this, that would be a whole different story. But 
you know, you know, we're going to make somewhere close to a, maybe even a little over a million dollars at the end of the year. Um, and so knowing that, I think we're going to do it. Okay. So that's decided. Let's add GPS to it. Let's add the fat wide tires to it. It's already in the big configuration. Uh, I think I like the continental wheels the best. Um, Yeah, I like the Continental wheels. I don't know why. I just do. And so, yeah, we're going to buy it. Okay, so that means we need $255,586 and a little extra operating cash between now and January. Okay, so let's go here. And um, let's borrow money until we're up to $255,000. The bank loves me, by the way, just so you guys know. Okay, so that gets us to 256. Um, but we're gonna, you know, we're gonna need a little more than that too. So let's go. Let's just borrow three hundred thousand dollars. Or well, not borrow three hundred thousand, but um, borrow enough to where we that'll leave us around forty thousand dollars left over of operating cash. Okay, um, back to here, back to here. Uh, we wanted to go with Continental. We wanted the wide tires and we want the GPS and we have the big configuration. If you're curious, the small configuration is 15,000 liters. The big configuration is 18,000 liters. We've done it. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. We have now, we are now the proud owners of the biggest combine in the base game. And she's a beaut. Fantastic, man. Okay, so um, this is going to need to be repaired. How much um, is 56% damaged? We have $40,000 of operating cash. How much is it going to cost to repair this thing? $9,000. Let's just do it and get it done with. Now we have $30,000 of operating cash. Woo! Life can really be expensive sometimes, but look at that thing, you guys. Oh, man, I love it. She is a beaut, or he, or it, whatever you prefer. We, you, we've we used this before, too, on contracts, and I just, I just loved it. All right. Now, the next question is, where the heck are we going to park it? <laughs> we can't park it over here by the old combine. Um... Well, actually, we probably can, and we might. We could probably even just sell the the Deutsch far. Not not that we're gonna get a lot of money from it, but. How much money would we get from this? Uh, we wanna go here. Okay, yeah, we get if we take it down to the shop, which we of course would do, uh, we'd get about twenty twenty thousand dollars for it. Um, on the other hand, if we keep it, that does still give us a second combine. Um, and that might be more valuable to us to have the second combine than selling it. So I I think yeah, I think we're gonna keep it. Let's just keep it. At least for now. And because of that, we're just going to continue to park it here. We're going to have to figure something else out for the for the big the big boy. So we'll just keep that there. Um, will this fit in the barn? If it does, it's going to be tight. Let's just see. Oh, this is awesome, you guys. Okay. I think it will. It is tight, but it does fit. I think it's the... Right, are we running into the trailer? What are we running into? I think it's our wide tires that are... That's uh, messing us up here. Oh, 
<laughs> just barely fits. Oh, that's hilarious. But it does fit. Okay, well, that's the new home for this. And now, now we're going to have to figure out where to park the Fint. Uh, we might... I, I, yeah, I don't like to leave those open trailers out in the weather. Not that it actually matters, but, you know. We'd, we'd be further ahead leaving the man out than the tractor, probably. What else could we do? We could leave this other flatbed trailer out. It's really too long for this shed anyway. Yeah, maybe that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. We'll just keep the two plat beds parked outside. Not the best scenario. And, you know, I'm still planning on increasing our, our shed situation in the future, but not something we can do right now, of course. All right. Well, that was a big, that was a big decision, you guys. But I feel good about it. I don't, I don't feel like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I, I think that was the right move. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, though. You know, keeping in mind that in two months from now, we're going to you know, be way back in the black. We're just going to have to pay, you know, some interest between now and then, but it is what it is. It's an opportunity that came along and I took advantage of it, so. When we can afford to do so, like I said, we'll invest in some, some larger sheds. Because eventually I'd like to get all of my equipment undercover. The good news though here in Elm Creek is it doesn't rain a whole lot. Well, I don't actually know if that's good or not. Considering that there's no irrigation in this game, so we have to rely upon the rain for watering the crops. That's always been a an interesting concept to me. And the reason for that is because... I was raised in central Washington state in the Columbia Valley Basin. And we have, uh, we have irrigation. I mean, every single farm has access to irrigation where I grew up. You know, there's canals and ditches. And, uh, you know, one of the jobs I used to do is, you know, change um, field lines, you know, water lines to water alfalfa fields and stuff like that. So it, it's always just seemed a little bizarre to me that... Um, uh, yeah, we'll put the tractor over there. You know, that the mid farms in the Midwest, you know, rely upon the weather uh, to water the crops. And sometimes that doesn't work out, you know, and that brings some, some rough times to the farmers. It wouldn't be neat if the Giants um, added irrigation to this game. So you could change like wheel lines or hand lines and stuff like that. Maybe they will in the future. Who knows? All right, my friends. Yeah. So um, what I'm going to do is advance to the end of the month. And then we will uh, take a look at our end of the month finances. I'm not. Nothing's really going to happen, though, between now and then. Uh, all the contracts are finished for the month. We, m we might have to do a couple of chores, but nothing major. And, oh, I'm stuck. Might have to uh, get over a little further here. There we go. Okay, yeah, so I'll bring you back at the end of the month. We'll take a look at the finances, and then uh, I think we'll wrap up this episode. So I'll see you in a couple of days. All right, guys, welcome back to a rainy October 3rd. And let's see, is there anything we need to do before we wrap things up for this month as far as chores go? Uh, chickens are in good in good shape food-wise. Uh, there's a couple eggs I could probably move over. Uh, cows are in pretty good shape, but what we could do is go here and just top them off a little bit. Whoa, camera's going crazy on me. Crazy. All right, cows are topped off. Um, we got some wool that we could move over. Uh, but I think I'll do that later. Yeah, I'll move the wool over later. Let's see, what else? 
Uh, the sheep are getting low on hay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give them some more hay. And then if we look at our productions, uh, the greenhouses are all in very good shape. Uh, the dairy's gonna need a little bit of milk, and um, looks like the rest of these guys are all blue, going good. Uh, we got all that cotton in there now, so uh, this thing's really probably cranking out the fabric quite a bit, which is awesome. And that's just being distributed directly to the tailor shop. And we're in pretty, look at that. We got full flour in the bakery. You know, I, I keep looking at the sugar and I'm thinking to myself, man, that doesn't look like it's going down, but it is going down. It's just going down really, really slowly, which is actually working out in our favor uh, because of the fact that we weren't able to har harvest sugar beets this year. Uh, so these things consume uh, both, you know, the, what is this? The, the dairy, dairy, no bakery. Uh, the bakery and the dairy both consume the sugar at a very slow rate, which is seems odd, but it's working in our favor. So, um, yeah, so there's that. Okay, so, yeah, I don't think we have to really do anything chores-wise. Well, actually, we do. I got I to gotta take the wool to the spinnery and give the sheep some hay, but I'll do that off camera uh, this time around anyway. And so, yeah, let's uh, just stand out here in the rain and, ooh, look at that. Here's a Claus Axion. That's a medium tractor. Um, oh, okay. Is this, this can be, wait, hold on a sec. Is that just a trailer? Tipper's trailers. Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe that might be a manure spreader. Um, it's got 52,000 liters, but then we already have two 52,000 liter trailers. So we don't really need that. Plus it's way too expensive. What is this thing? Look at this. <laughs> Look at this monster auger wagon, man. Uh, 211,000 liters. Oh, my word. Mother bins. How much horsepower does this thing require? 400 horsepower. My goodness, that thing's huge. And it's $82,000 half price. Okay, well, yeah, we don't need that. Uh, nice claws tractor, but I think we're done spending money for now. <laughs> we're already... <laughs> We're already way in the uh, in debt with the bank, but again, that's a temporary thing. Uh, so anyway, yep. Yeah, let's stand out here in the rain and go through our finances, and then we got to wrap up this episode here. So, all right, October, we spent two hundred and fifty-five thousand five hundred eighty-six dollars, guys, in October, and you know what? We spent it on that beautiful, beautiful combine that we have. Uh, let's see, we spent thirty-five thousand dollars repairing our vehicles, and that's because. Um, I, you know, I, I wasn't repairing them as I went along like I normally do. Uh, so that's pretty darned expensive. Uh, we spent thirty six fifty nine in leasing costs. Um, most of that was for leasing, if not all of it was for leasing the slurry applicator. Uh, 809 in property maintenance, minus five in production costs. We've sold uh, $2,217 in bales, just, you know, extra bales from the contracts that I wasn't able to catch. Uh, we spent 1733 in fuel, 482 in water costs. We grossed $6,920 in uh, harvest income. And that's because we did soybeans and sunflowers, and we just sold uh, the bonus from that because uh, there's no point in me keeping those things. Uh, we netted, or no, sorry, we grossed $112,777,000 in contracts. So that was, this is a, was a really good month for contract money. Um, and a lot of that, of course, well, all of it really went to help us pay for our new combine. Uh, we paid $12,000 in wages, so a pretty high wage month, but I use workers a lot. We have not paid our pallet worker. Yeah, so we need to do that. And it looks like I forgot to pay them in September. So uh, did I? Yep, it looks like I did. Okay, so um, and then, of course, we paid 900 bucks in loan interest, which really sucks, but it is what it is. Okay, so we looks like we owe our worker for two months. Man, that I'm surprised that guy still works for us. <laughs> We're a ter terrible employer. Uh, so that means we need to take out $6,400. Um, so we are now even with our worker. Okay, so yeah. Uh, wait, why isn't that showing up there? Under miscellaneous. Did I, did I not, did I cancel that? Okay, hold on. I got to go back and look at the recording. Hold on a second. 
Okay, so yeah, I just went back and looked at the footage, and I didn't actually hit enter to deduct that. So uh, let's try that again. So 6400 bucks. Press enter. There we go. Remove 6400 from farm account. That's that's more like it. Um, whoops. And so if we look at this, we now have the money taken out of miscellaneous uh, for both September and October. All right, guys, that leaves us with 22000 $108 of operating cash. And let's see what's going to happen next month. Next month's November. We're going to sell eggs in November. Oh, I keep hitting that stupid button. Uh, let's see. Eggs uh, for sure. Let's look at the thingy here. Yeah, eggs are going to be the best in November. And I think that's it. Bread's going to be good in December. And chocolate's January. And we sold, we, we already sold milk here in September. And it comes back up in December and January too, but, uh, oh, straw. Yeah, we were going to, we're, we're probably going to sell a decent amount of straw. We have over 2 point, we have 2.2 .2 million liters of straw. So we're going to sell some of that in December. Get a little money for that too. Uh, but. As far as work goes in November, uh, we're going we're gonna to do our fourth hay cutting. I'm probably just going to do that one off camera, guys. You've seen it many times. Uh, so I'm just going to bust that out uh, off camera this time around. And my plan is to, is to do the big sausages again, and I'm just going to run those along the roadway. Uh, so we'll get that done, and we'll probably have a couple more contracts pop up in November for probably fertilizing, maybe, maybe cold fighting, that sort of thing. And we'll get that knocked out. So I will probably start the next episode at the end of November, bring you back at that point. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys are excited as I am about our new top of the line Kloss Combine. Man, this thing is a beaut. Lexion. Oh, I love it. Hope I can get it back out of there. <laughs> Lexion 8900. Oh, man, I can't wait for Harvest to show up. Wow, we... Uh, Scratch the paint a little bit there. Okay, let's forget. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.